there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com and today we are going to talk about real homeschooling. <laughs> So glad to be back. Last time I had my daughter do my video for me. I think she did a wonderful job. She's so cute and she's so sweet. If you met her in person, she would be your best friend. <laughs> um, <clears throat> my voice is slowly coming back. Everybody was hit, but I usually get hit in the vocal cords whenever there's like a cold going around. I don't know why that is. <laughs> so I found I sound a little um, lower toned <laughs> than normal, but I hope you can put up with it. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about, um, you know, just like real homeschooling, okay? And this goes beyond all the plans we make and all the schedules we make and, you know, the books we buy and everything. At a certain point, it just gets real. <laughs> and we're faced with things like when people get sick. And uh, everybody around the house, they had a slight cold, but one of our daughters, they just really, oh, it was really attacked her. And so she was really down. So we were taking care of her. And of course, the plans that I had for ancient Egypt and, and all the math and everything we were going to do, um, they didn't really pan out during that time. And, um, you know, there's a lot of SpongeBob and <laughs> things like that. I'm sure you can relate. And so um, that's not the only interruption, though. You can have interruption of illness. Um, and uh, we can even have an interruption in nice weather. <laughs> because in the fall, you see, it's not so hot that you can't enjoy outside. And it's not so cold that you can't enjoy outside. It's just like perfect and everything's green and just turning different colors and it's kind of sparkly. And you have all these plans, you know, for all the different curriculum and you're just gonna get this schedule and everybody's gonna be moving. And then you have this beautiful, gorgeous day and the kids just wanna play outside and you just wanna go on a picnic. And you think, oh my goodness, but all my plans. And then God says to you, listen, <laughs> homeschooling is not about checking off all the boxes. It's about the whole person. And the whole person needs to be, uh, needs to be engaged in who I am and in my creation and in fellowship with one another and in learning how to be kind and good to people when maybe they're a little grouchy because they're not feeling well. How to do, how to nurse somebody back to health. About all these important things that are the whole person. See, our factory education mindset has wanted to turn us into little robots. You know, we do X, we do Y, we do Z, you know. I mean, it gets crazy when I was in, when I was in public school. I was deathly afraid of asking the teacher if I could use the restroom because when you're in a classroom, and I know that everybody, almost everybody listening to me understands this, when you are six and seven years old and you have to go to the bathroom, it is mortifying to have to raise your hand, right? And the teacher's, and the teacher's trying to teach. So this is, teachers bless their hearts. Don't always react in a sweet way to this, okay? Uh, excuse me, teacher, I have to go to the bathroom. Then you have to go up to the front. The teacher has to give you whatever thing that says you have a pass to go to the bathroom. And then you have to go outside the, uh, the classroom and go to the, go to the bathroom, right? And so uh, all this time, everyone in the class knows, oh, she has to go to the bathroom. I don't know why, but that's just like, some, it's like mortifying to me, okay? And I had... Some bladder issues when I was in school, I had one kidney infection after the other when I was growing up. And so, I know, I have 15 kids. Imagine that. My kidneys must be fine. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I had all these different things going on. And so if you think about it, in school, your natural bodily functions, you as a human being, are an interruption to the system. Understand? And so when we come to homeschooling, we have that same mindset. Oh my goodness, we can't be natural growing human beings because we must stick with the factory model. And so I'm giving you permission today. Color outside the lines, you know? Get outside of the factory mindset and understand, and this is okay, it's not, it's not a criticism of you. I understand, I struggle with it myself. But it's okay not to follow the plan. 
okay? It's, it's good to have a plan. We have to have goals and plans. I'm not against that either. But when things happen, may it, let it be actually a boon, actually a blessing in your homeschooling. Now, the other day I told you that everybody's been ill, I lost my voice, I couldn't even read aloud, right? And so, as my voice came back, and my girls were still kind of recovering, in recovery mode, I just decided, I said, Lord, I don't know how to fit this all in, but I'm just going to trust you today. And he said, grab a devotional and grab this book and just go sit and read. So we took, now I think I did Streams in the Desert. That's, that's another one. I did this one in Streams in the Desert. And Streams in the Desert was talking about something to do with the, the, the Feast of Booths, you know, suck it. And so what we did was, is we jumped off, we read the passage of scripture that the little verse was from. Then we jumped off and we learned all about suck it. And we learned about, excuse me, we learned about Feast of Booths. And we learned about Jesus said, from your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And we, attra we attached it all together and it was a beautiful learning experience. And then I read something from this. This is, oh. I bound this myself. You won't find this at a bookstore. This is uh, McGuffey's Alternate Fifth Reader, and I found this through Dollar Home School on the CDs. And um, so anyway, so I took this and I printed it out and I bound it myself. I did kind of a perfect binding with hot glue, and I, think I have a tutorial on my blog if you want to know how to do this, but see how it, it works just like a book. I mean, you can't really tell, right? Although it looks a little homemade and hokey. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so I read something from this out loud, and we discussed it, and then we went through it. So I, I had my little tablet. This is just an Android tablet, okay? I don't, I don't have all that other stuff. But anyway, we took my Android tablet, and we took whatever we read from here, and we explored it together. And so um, when we did that, I mean, that was just like an hour's worth of time that we spent doing all this. And you know what? We were spiritually enthused and we got some information and we learned about history. We learned about science. We did all kinds of stuff. And I just did, I just took three things and that's what we did. So that was homeschooling. And it was even academics, right? Okay, and you know, you've heard of the morning basket, Pam Barnhill, you know, she talks about that. And that's so amazing. But you know, even that sometimes can become like a tyranny, right? Because you say, okay, first we have to do this one, then do this one, then do this one, then do this one. But I'm giving you permission that some days you don't want to do any of those. You want to go to a different book. <laughs> and you want to go do something totally different. Maybe you just want to read your novel aloud for an hour and if people you want to put it out, no mom, one more chapter. So you read one more chapter, right? <laughs> and so you're just doing that. Here, here, here's some other books like, okay, so this is The World of Science. I got this from, was it? I got it second hand, but it was, this one's done by, I think, yeah, Master Books. Master Books put this one out. So I got this and, um, you know, what if you just took a page um, about waves? And you just took this, and that's all you did for a day. You just went, and you, you read all about this, and you went online, and then you threw out a notebooking page, and the kids got to draw and write about whatever they thought was enthusing about this. That's homeschooling. You didn't have to plan it. You didn't have to, like, you know, write it and, and put it in your calendar. You didn't have to, like, okay, it's in my basket. You, know, you don't have to do anything like that. You just grab something and go with it. And that is homeschooling. And the same with outside, like it's beautiful. Okay, this is fall, this is fall, I love it. It's, um, it's not too hot and it's not too cold. And guess what, my girls yesterday, I said, you know guys, we we're doing Egypt, so they were um, rewriting their, um, their narrative on the life of Joseph. And I said, have you guys finished that? And they'll, can we do it later, mom? We just wanna go on a walk. And you know, I said, yes, go on a walk. I said, I think that's a good homeschool project. So they went on a walk together, or they go on a bike ride, or go with their sisters. They have, their sister drives them to do hikes a lot, and you can do that. I mean, that also is homeschooling. So I hope I'm giving you permission to educate not just the brain, you know? We're not just brains attached to bodies. We are spiritual beings, and we have a soul 
That means we have a mind, will, and emotions. And when we educate, we educate all that person. You know, we, we teach them how to be kind, how to love God, how to make a delicious meal and put some beautiful music on so it's an experience. We do those kinds of things. That's the heart of homeschooling. So have a wonderful homeschooling day. And now I want to give you something more. Here's a good passage to meditate on, especially as things seem to be going a little crazy around. Of course, things have been going crazy for a long time, but we just kind of been like anesthetized, you know, they want to, no, look over here. Don't look here. <laughs> now, before I say this, before I read this, I want to get something clear. I stand for the truth because the truth sets people free. Okay. I'm talking about truth about <clears throat> all the different issues that we're looking at today. Um, the, the issues about who we are as far as gender. The issues about, um, you know, the, the money. Issues about money. Issues about government. Issues about every part of our life. The truth of God is what I stand for. I don't care what the, the, the prevailing wind is, which way it's shifting. I know what God said is truth. And I know that speaking the truth to others will set them free. Not being quiet about it, not hiding, okay? So I'm not about hiding the truth, all right? But there is a place when we're talking about, I was talking about the whole person. As a human being, as an adult human being, we have to think of our whole person. And we, you know, last I checked, nobody in Washington, D.C. is calling me up to ask about national policy. <laughs> However, I do have influence here in my home and with all the people that I know. I have influence. And in those circles of influence, I am going to speak the truth. I'm going to stand for the truth. And I'm going to be the kingdom of God on earth. You know, bring the kingdom of God to the earth. That's what it says. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right? See? So that's what Jesus said, occupy until I come. So that's what I will be about. However, in my person, who I am, who, who I am to others in personal relationship, who I am to God, I am going to stay in peace. I'm going to stay in the fruits of the Spirit. Okay? Because I believe that I'm more effective for the truth when I am led by the Holy Spirit. When my life is lived according to the Holy, the fruits of the Spirit, right? Okay, so there's a scripture, it's Colossians 3.3, 3, and it says, Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Now, that's the NIV. The NKJV is, set your, set your, okay, set your minds on things above, not on earth. Not on not things, not not on things on the earth, whatever. But basically, it's in the Greek. It's not on earth. Okay, earth is what? Okay, we could say earth is the physical world in which we express ourselves in this arena, right? But you can also say earth is like dirt, right? You know, dirt. Don't mess with dirt. But it says heavenly things. If you think about it, you are putting your mind up above the dirt. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read to you, this is from a Helps Word Studies, and I get this off of Bible Hub, so you can get it yourself. If you go into the Greek interlinear area and then you click on the Strong's number, it doesn't make sense unless you go in there. And then you'll find these um, descriptions of these different Greek words, it's amazing. And you'll find like references to ancient writings, and it'll help you even get even more insight. So fun. So. Earthly things are dirt things, okay? Um, let's see here. It's gay. Gay is the word for earth here. And it's the temporary probationary place to live out moral preferences through the body, i.e. as free moral agents. And that's 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 10. In this way, God makes an eternal record of everything we do on earth through faith. Each scene of life becomes equally eternally significant. So that's really interesting, isn't it? And in Hebrew, it's asitia, which is physical theater in which our eternal destiny freely plays out. Interesting that. Okay, so I have written here, put your mind on above things. 
uh, not on dirt stuff. That's my paraphrase. <laughs> so rise above the dirt. Okay, so everybody's playing dirty. There's corruptness, every corrupt, corruption, corruption everywhere. There's all kinds of corruption going on, and then you get into like. And you like that, and you just can get corrupt yourself. <laughs> you can become corrupted. So Jesus said, "Then we must be in the world. We must be in the world to influence the world, and yet not be of it. Don't let it touch you. Don't let it dirty you." Does that make sense? The Bible also says we need to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Now, how do we do this? Okay. We have to become so heavenly minded that we are vessels to bring God's kingdom to earth. And how do we do, how do, we do that? Okay, so what we do is <clears throat> we focus in on our upgrading God. We focus in on being, becoming a person who is in God's presence consistently. Our upgrade is to get closer to God. You understand? That's our posture. Our posture in life is... I'm here and I am among people and I am influencing them for God and I am loving them and enjoying them because God gave us all things freely to enjoy. At the same time, I am not being unduly influenced because my heart and my mind, my treasure is with God in Christ. Yeah. And so when we have negative thoughts, and this you can find this in Graham Cook, you can look him up. When we have negative thoughts in our minds, what he suggests, and he believes this is this is like a word from God, okay? When a negative thought or mindset comes, what we do is we put it on pause. We put it on pause. And we don't try to get rid of it, we just pause it. And that's exhibiting self-control. We have self-control over that thought. Whenever we have self-control, we bring in the other fruits of the Spirit with it. That's Galatians 5, 21, 22 through 23. What are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So with self-control, when you exhibit self-control over a thought, a negative thought, it could be a negative thought of a person, a situation, doesn't matter, a negative thought, then you bring in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, see? And you, and you use those those, those, those um, fruits of the Spirit rise up within you. Jesus said, remember we're talking about suck it? Jesus said, from your innermost being will rise rivers of living water. We use one of the fruits of the Spirit to concentrate on instead of the negative thought. So we put on that kindness or patience, long-suffering, right? Or gentleness. Sometimes God doesn't want us to do something. He wants to be able to be the strong one to come and change that situation for us. And so when we start doing that, amazing that what happens, that peace and joy pervade ourselves. And then when we're faced with these situations, instead of reacting and we're just going to hit that thing and start we start responding. Okay, I have a reaction. Like a, like. Because I'm going to protect my, I'm going to protect, right? I'm going to, I'm not going to let that stand. But then we have, instead, we we respond. Okay, so this is the situation, God. I need you to be, I need you to help me in this situation, Lord. How should I respond? And then when we respond, we actually become a solution for the situation. Or at least preventing it from becoming worse. Because we're responding with God's positive power. Please, I'm not trying to be guru on you, okay? I just know that the kingdom of God is very positive. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only negative is when it's against sin, right? Against sin and evil. But the rest of God's kingdom is all positive. Everybody in heaven is happy. Just saying. So anyway, so when we can fight against, it, it's actually fighting against the chaos, the devil in our, in our flesh wants to bring in. When we respond and bring healing, we bring peace, we bring restoration, we bring like ingenuity. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so your face, like the washer is broken, right? So, and you don't have any money to fix it. And so you're going, okay, Lord, I am going to pause the neg all the negative, fearful things I can think. And instead, 
I'm going to respond to this situation in a way that's glorifying to you. So first off, I'm going to trust you that no matter what happens in this situation, it's going to be good because you are a good God and you take care of me. And my, my best good is just to become closer to you. So in expressing my faith and trusting you, then I open the way for your Holy Spirit to work in my life and the lives of others. And I free myself up to have faith to know that you're going to provide for me. So it gives you the permission in my life to bring an ultimate good of the situation. So, so you're praying. I believe in God saying, well, we'll just throw some clothes in the, in the um, tub and we'll stomp them. <laughs> we'll do that and we do that a little bit. And then, you know, oh, look, we got this money. We didn't even know it was coming in. Or a friend says, yeah, I can, I can fix, fix washing machines and fixes it for you. Or you look, you look, you see there's a code and you look up the code, bam, your washing machine's back in order. And you see you did all of that without submitting to earthly things, to earthly thinking, to like, oh, bad, going, worse, everything, yeah, right? You got above it. And in going above it, now you've got not only a better situation with all your family members, even if someone else freaked out, you responded instead of reacting. So now you've got the peace of God, now you've got the kingdom of God reigning, right? And you've got a good outcome in the end anyway. Hallelujah. Win, 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 right? So this is how we live in the Lord. We get our mind on things above and not on dirt stuff. So what did I say? Um, okay, let's see, what did I put to my, okay. Rise above the dirt. I had it I paraphrased here just a second. <laughs> okay, where did I put it? It was really cool. Okay, okay. Put your mind on above things, not on dirt stuff. Don't get dirty. Get, you know, get, get in the light, get above it. It's so much more fun. <laughs> so I hope that helps you today. God bless you amazingly. And thank you for all the well wishes for my health. I really appreciate that and the prayers. I love it. And like and subscribe if you didn't already. Bye-bye.